Where to go to find love. Hi guys, my name is Christine Loveridge and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about where you can go to find love. So before we get into this video, please do leave a like on this video and please do subscribe as that really does help my channel out. Thank you so much. So when it comes to finding love, finding the right partner who you can spend the rest of your life with, what are some of the best options that you have in order to find that right person for you? Obviously there are different avenues that you can take. So you can meet someone in person. So perhaps you might meet someone at work, um, perhaps you might meet someone through like a mutual friend at like a barbecue or a wedding. Um, there's that option. Uh, you could go down the online route. So getting apps like Tinder or Bumble or uh, websites like Match.com or eHarmony, those kinds of things. You can use those. Um, another thing that you can do uh, when you're trying to meet someone in person, let's say you really don't want to find someone online and you'd rather meet someone, then one of the best things for you to actually do is to go to places, go to events that you like, that you have a big interest in. So perhaps uh, for you, perhaps you really like gaming, so go to gaming conventions, or perhaps you really like comic books and like, um, uh, or like popular like science fiction movies and stuff. So you can go to events like say like Comic Con, or perhaps you're LGBT and you really want to meet, meet um, other LGBT people. Uh, the best way that you can probably do that is to go to some kind of LGBT event or something like Pride or something along the lines of like any kind of sort of like uh, rally maybe or an event. For example, for me, um, I went once to a, a film premiere of a LGBT movie and I was able then to talk to people in the lobby before the movie. I wasn't really looking to find love but because I knew most of the other people there were gay it was so much more easy for me to bring up conversations about the movie and about you know LGBT stuff. Have a good look at the things that you are personally interested in. And uh, when you go to somewhere that you have a good interest in, like for me example, that LGBT movie, um, it's much more easier to talk about things to strangers. So if you already have a common interest with someone, it's a lot easier to talk to them. So let's say you go to a comic convention and there's a certain comic book, I don't know, uh, artist or storyteller, um, and you go to the, where that's happening, and most of the people that are probably gonna be there are people that know a lot about this person who creates these comics. So you can strike up, it's easy to strike up conversations with people that are there. And it's also a really good way to make friends as well, like-minded friends. Um, but it's also a really good place to meet people who you could date. So when you're in those kinds of scenarios, it's so much easier to talk to people. The most ineffective way I personally think um, to find love, um, to find the right partner, um, is random encounters on the street, uh, people in supermarkets, people um, in nightclubs as well, because I guess you would have a common interest in the fact that you both like going to nightclubs, but because it's really hard to talk to people in nightclubs, it's very, and it, most likely both of you are gonna be drunk, right? Um, it's going to be very, very difficult to have a proper conversation with them. And there's also like the loud music and they might not even remember you after you've spoken to them. Like you may swap numbers, but they might not remember you because you're both drunk and they might have got really drunk and then just didn't remember what happened. You know, or that might happen to you. You might just get a phone call from someone, some, some person who you've got numbers from um, and you don't know who they are because you just got too drunk and stuff. So it's probably the least effective way to find people is like that way. Um, and also with things like supermarkets and random encounters, um, it's very unlikely that um, people are gonna trust you if you just approach someone in a supermarket or you approach someone on the street. And the reason why that is is because um, 
there's no social proof so they don't know you you don't really have any common interests yet because you don't know each other so it's going to come off they're going to be very defensive and very uh curiously worried about you i think that's personally how i would take it if some random person just came up to me on the street and started having a conversation with me or if this happened in a supermarket even though i may think that they're good looking um, i'm going to be really defensive and feeling um, unsure about the situation so it's much easier to approach people in places where there's a common interest because you could just go up to them and start talking to them about what's happening. Um, another thing is if you really like exercise and so let's say you do running or uh, you go to the gym, it's a bit easier to talk to people at that kind of thing. Like if you go to like a, a yoga class or at the beginning of a race um, or if there's some kind of like other exercise group happening at a gym um, and you're all together, it's so much easier to talk to people in those kinds of environments because of the common interest. So those are the best ways you can do it. And with online dating, that's also quite effective as well because you can literally put in your bio um, some of the things that you like, some of the things that you value. Um, and you can, when you're looking for matches, you can also see what those people are interested in and if you have any common interests. And then it's so much easier to strike a book, like a first message with someone if you can tell that they like some of the same things as you do. Um, and then it's just, it's just a lot easier to make things uh, flow as opposed to if you just look at their pictures and you think that they're hot um, and that's the only reason why you're messaging them and you don't really like what's in their bio or they might not even have that much in their bio. Um, it's going to be much more difficult to create a connection with that person because you're going to need to fish a lot for the stuff that they like and they dislike. So online dating is good in that sense as long as you are really looking for people that you can probably have a connection with. And by connection, I mean having common interests. And that's why having a bio on dating profiles is so good. And I highly recommend that if you do have a dating profile, make sure that you do have uh, you know, a, a, a good bunch of things in there um, explaining the type of person that you are and the kind of per person and the kind of things that you like. Um, because um, then it will give them more of a picture of who you are and it'll be much more easier for them to even reach out to you and message you first. Uh, I recently made a video on creating a good dating profile so you can get more matches. Um, so I highly recommend that you go and watch that video. Um, but when it comes to, I'll just give you a quick brief on good online dating profiles. So firstly, make sure that you have very clear pictures of yourself and it's not pixelated or you're not very far in the, or it, and make sure that it's in focus as well. So you don't look blurry um, or it's not something that was taken years and years ago. Make sure that you have recent photos of yourself where you look happy um, and you're enjoying yourself. I go into it in more detail in that video, so please go and check that video out. It's up in the card, um, so go and you can go and click on that right now if you want to. So when you're in a situation where you meet someone, let's say you do meet someone in person and you take my advice on going to places that you personally like going to or events that you like going to. Um, another thing about events though, be very careful with like gigs and festivals um, because um, it, again, the, the loud music is going to make it very, very difficult for you to actually talk to people. Um, so make sure you go to somewhere that there's stuff going on, but it's not so loud that you can't have a good conversation with someone. Okay, so that means no nightclubs or gigs, basically anywhere where there's loud noise going on, because you can't get to know someone when there's so much noise going on and you can't hear what they're saying and they can't hear you. So when you meet someone in at an event. Um, like at a museum or like a comic convention or a movie convention um, or a, a gym or before a race, um, any of those kinds of things, um, then if you see someone that you like and you think that they're good looking and you want to know more about them, you know, go up to them, you know, ask them questions about themselves. So you obviously one of the first things that you want to probably find out is if they're single or not. Um, sometimes you can probably check it out if they have like a ring. So obviously I have a ring on my finger because I'm engaged. Um, so you, sometimes you can kind of check those things out. Um, what, you know, as you like size people up, shall we say, <laughs> right? As long as you're not doing it in a creepy way, don't stare too much, you know, be subtle about it. Just have a sieve quick glance and see if they've got a ring on their finger. Um, but sometimes, but obviously there are people out there that are in relationships that don't have any jewelry on them. Um, like if they're just in a relationship and they're not engaged yet, that kind of thing. Um, when you start talking to someone, you know, strike up a friendly conversation with them. Um, I ask them about their life and then try and find out whether or not they are in a relationship or not. And if you find out that they're not in a relationship, 
then that's a great time to say, would you like to hang out? Would you like, when are you available this week to meet up for a coffee? Because I'm having a great conversation with you. I'd love to carry on the conversation. When are you, when are you free? And then just wait for them to tell you when they're available. And then you can set up a time and place with them. And something else that I want to point out as well is if you do actually get into contact with someone and they do have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they're not, you know, single, um, don't just rule them out. Don't just walk away and be rude or anything like that. You know, maybe perhaps you can actually be friends with this person. Perhaps this is someone that you could, you know, hang out with. Um, as long as the attraction for them doesn't get in the way. If you feel like it will, then perhaps not. But, you know, also this is a great way to not just meet people to fall in love with and have a relationship with and go on dates with. But it's also a great way to find new friends and to make uh, new connections. So one of the things that I want to do, especially when all of this stuff in the world that's happening right now is gone, is I want to go to more places where there's more people like me that are into personal development and stuff. So um, that's one of the ways and one of the routes that I want to go down um, in order to make new friends, especially because me and my fiance aren't planning on staying in the area where we live right now. So when we do move to a different area and we, you know, kind of settle down and put down our roots somewhere, um, then I'm going to be looking for those kinds of groups, those kinds of events going on in that particular area to find new friends and stuff like that. So, you know, these are all great ways to actually find new friends as well. So don't just go out there looking to just find um, someone to date, you know, because you might actually end up making a good friend and you don't want to rule out the possibility of making a great friendship as well because friendship is really, really important um, in your life as well as obviously a romantic relationship. So anyway, those are my thoughts on where to find love, where to find the right person for you. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you'd like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com slash shop. On there, there is uh, some coaching options available for you. There is also a free PDF that you can download. It's a dating manual that you can read. Um, it's in the beta stages, so if you have any critiques, if you have any um, thoughts, any things that you wish I had to put in there, then please do let me know so I can make it even better for the people that want it. I hope this video has helped you, and I shall talk to you guys again very soon. Goodbye, guys.